Corps is a company that was built by two former special operations operatives. And an old man. And an old man. <laughs> Do I need this for you guys or can I just talk loud? We'll use this. Yeah. All right, so. Uh, we have a former Navy SEAL, and Joel's not allowed to tell people what he used to do. Janitor. He was a janitor. He's, he's yeah. Just look him dead in the eyes, and you wonder what he cleaned up. <laughs> uh, anyway, these guys are the pros, is what I'm telling you. Um, they have, have provided pr protection. <laughs> They're going to make fun of me and make me laugh now. They've provided protection for presidential candidates, foreign dignitaries, their families, and uh, some. And they've also been featured on a number of conservative talk show dignitaries. I myself am with the 912 Project. My name is Stephanie Scruggs. I'm the national co-chair. And we partner at the 912 Project with E3 Core to teach people the principles of self-defense. There are a lot of things that people don't think about and don't realize. What E3 Core provides is the difference between thinking you're safe and actually knowing you're safe. It's all fine and dandy to have a gun, but for most women, most women get a gun from their husband for Christmas and it goes in the safe and they never shoot it. The fact of the matter is, if their husband or their daddy is not home and someone comes in the house, they are not going to know how to use it. And they're probably not going to be able to pull the trigger when it comes down to it. They're going to die or get raped or the kids are going to get kidnapped, and that's just the fact of the matter. If you look at the statistics, that's really what happens. What E3 Core does is it trains people using UTM rounds, so you're actually pulling the trigger, you actually have the instant reactions, and are able to overcome the issues that might cause you to choke up and get hurt or killed. We are providing this today as, uh, as uh, part of a fundraising campaign for Brenda Leonard, a conservative Republican candidate for Congress here. Standing right there in the back. Standing right there in the back. Huge supporter of the Second Amendment, huge supporter of liberty. So with that, gentlemen. All right. Um, I want to thank all you guys for coming. Some of you guys have already been here for a while. I don't think Sure. Um, one of the things I want to go over real quick on the safety brief side, you expressed some concern earlier about the muzzle discipline. Um, with the pistol that we're using today, you can you take any, uh, not any, but most pistols that you have, what we do is we convert your existing pistol or an AR platform by changing out the barrel. The barrel that we have here today is actually used for blank, silent blank. So if you look down that right there, see how it's blocked off? All right. This gives us the ability to take somebody that may or may not have shot a lot before and safely put a real pistol into their hands without compromising safety or losing limbs, fingers, eyes, the teeth, whatever else happens when you accidentally discharge a firearm. Put the weapon back into function, everything's safe. The only thing you have to do is make sure that everything cycles and functions exactly the same way that you worked when you first started off. And when you're done, you take the barrel back out put your live barrel back in there and now you have a hot live weapon system or pistol. Um, today we're going to go through a couple different things here. One of the aspects, I want to use her anyways because she's sitting there and I'm going to use these two kids. From a training standpoint, most people will never get off the flat range, let alone go inside your home and teach you how to defend yourself in your home utilizing real pistols or, or the things that you have, the assets that you have. More importantly is it's an individual concept. Training for the most part stays with you as an individual. It doesn't incorporate the family, the kids, and it doesn't teach you the communication, the movement necessary for you to be able to protect your whole family. I'm gonna utilize the kids today without kind of sterilize them so they don't know what's gonna go on. Then we'll go and work out the communication so that she can sit there and effectively do it. Children, especially little kids, don't actually know that tone or the special word, you know, that mom says, you know. So if you're coming inside a home, if you're coming inside a home and there's a somebody, there's a suspect in there, or there's somebody coming through the door, you're you get caught off guard, and your children are sitting there playing the Nintendo. What, have you guys worked out any like communication code words? Is it just like? You know, because you're yelling at them all day long already. Get off, get off, do the laundry, pick up clothes, pick up your socks, make your own lunch, whatever the case may be. So they're hearing you talk all the time. But if you don't communicate and don't come up with special dialogue, your children won't actually know where to go or what the response level is. 
So now we have the ability to actually get you to the point where you can pull that pistol out, communicate with the kids, work under stress, and actually function as a family to get to, get to safety. And it doesn't necessarily have to be an armed suspect or something in the, ha in the house. It could be natural disaster. It's the whole plan that escalates into something that provides safety for the whole family. So I'm going to let you shoot me a couple times. From a demonstration standpoint, I want to show to you guys the pistol itself. And there's this one does not have any uh, audible noise to it. It just cycles the pistol. So go ahead and take a couple rounds on it. So now I have the ability to take this and turn it into a, a functional tool for training as opposed to having, and I know it's not comfortable for most people to see a gun pointing at them, especially when it's pointed in their face gives me the opportunity to look at the person, look at him, their eyes, and everything else that's going on, so I can see if they're doing this. Because the last thing you need to do if you're, if you're trying to defend yourself from somebody is to close your eyes, not look. If you're not really paying attention to the surrounding area, you're not going to be able to defend yourself properly. So now we have the ability to sit there and look. And I actually get, so go ahead. Let's give it to Lynn. Lynn? She's chilling. <laughs> okay, Lynn. Now you brought up before. Okay, you brought up before the, the safe handling. You did. Safe handling, yep, you did. All right, I'm pointing right at you. Because you brought up before, well, you haven't handled a weapon or a pistol. Oh, right? Yeah. right? Pull it, point it okay. down. I'm going to engage the crowd right now. What's wrong? <coughs> Fingers on the trigger, muzzles pointed at me. Yes, you were going to shoot me. But when we're trying to teach women how to do this safely, do you want to be on the flat range with a live piece of material, a live piece of uh, ordinance in there that's going to potentially shoot me, the person next to him, and everything. So now we can do it in the confines of a nice, normal safe. I can talk to her nicely and say, please get your finger off there, as opposed to being out there where I'm going to yell at her because i got a whole bunch of other people that I have to worry about. So now we can kind of nicely teach you the proper way of doing it, how to grip, finger off the trigger, go ahead. And here you're doing it in the comfort of your own home, you're not doing it on a range, whereas there's other people around you, there's guns being shot, it's loud, you're not yelling at each other, trying to tell her things, and she's scared out of her mind, there's other people shooting next to her, and if you're being the RSO for her, she does something wrong, you know, you're grabbing the gun, you're getting her kind of out of the way of everything that's going on, and it, there's just a, a big stress that's going on, and it's a lot more difficult to let her get into the, the mode of understanding the gun, how it feels, how it moves, how it operates. And what this is doing, and if you guys have ever been next to trying to teach somebody how to shoot with a pistol or a weapon in general, shooting live rounds, you're standing next to it, you're looking at the side of the trigger finger. You can't sit there and you can't be this person and let her know from what she sees, close as you're going to do if you pull that up and just point it at his chest. You know, I've only got a, I've got a little view here here and then if I start trying to see how she's looking now I'm starting to get into uncomfortable unsafe type of things but like with this type of stuff if she's gonna aim I could sit here and look right back down those sights I can tell whether she's blinking squinting cocking her head twitching throwing throwing the trigger I can tell her where she's gonna hit when she actually does get around in that gun so right here, you know, she's more relaxed and she's going to be switched on in the learning mode. All right, so what I need you to do right now is you're going to, you're going to come up, you're going to present the pistol on me, okay? All right? And I want you to, I want you to squeeze the trigger. Where are you pointing at, right here? Okay, go ahead and squeeze the trigger. Okay. Now, finger off the trigger. All right? So that's pretty easy, right? Pretty standard. Now, if I was getting ready to charge you, would you be able to do that? If I was getting ready to come, if I was going to attack you, would you be able to do that? All right. So, if, and if this is with the point where you get under stress. The stress really hinders your ability to actually do what you say you're going to do. So, you know, if I come back. <laughs> That's what you want to happen. You want to see that re knee-jerk reaction. You want to be able to get there. If you can do this on a live range, go ahead and let me know. <laughs> I want to see it. I got my bed bag in the back, so I can plug holes. Um, so now, you've kind of gone through a little quick here. Now let's step it up, okay? Now I want you to sit down in that chair and get your finger off that trigger. Um, 
now we've got two grandkids entering the picture. So now we're talking about the family dynamic. Okay, go ahead. Get over here, guys. Give Grandma a big hug. <laughs> All right, so now we have the potential here to get not only just teach her what needs to happen, but now we can start incorporating the family. Okay? So let's say, hypothetically, I'm in the living room. The kids are sitting right here. Go ahead. Sit there on the thing and beat each other up like you normally would. I'm just kidding. <laughs> he was ready. Yeah, he, he was ready. ready. And I'm going to sit here. You know, I don't, I'm presuming you don't sit around the house <laughs> with a pistol. Pointing at your children. <laughs> what do you but mean? Now the opportunity presents itself. We can create any scenario that we need to in order to, to, to recreate something that you might need to protect yourself against. So while I'm sitting here, if let's say this was the, the, the entry door, and I'm sitting trying to gain entry into the house, and I see that you know she's sitting there, and I've got a gun, and I'm getting ready to come in here, all you need to do is protect yourself, okay? So I want you to do it naturally. I want you to just kind of you know, figure out what you're going to do, what you're going to say, and just kind of think about it. Like,